What's up guys, it's Motoko here, and in this video I want to talk about multiplayer deck builds. I was asked to do this video through the comments on YouTube, um, so I want to go ahead and do this for you. Now bear in mind that I, I'm making a few assumptions here. One is that the Afrit fight is going to be the multiplayer fight that is going to be released. Uh, so that's a, going to be a fire-based fight. Those are the, the kind of the two assumptions I'm making. Also, bear in mind that this is without any prior knowledge of the fight or any experience with the fight. So, please take this as a suggestion and not as kind of like, this is exactly what you should bring. Okay, these are just ideas and things that have been tossed around between myself and some of the better players that I've talked to through social media platforms such as Discord and Reddit. Um, so... White Mage, basically you're going to want to have one defensive ability, one offensive ability, one heal, and one damage card. I've already kind of brushed on that. Um, now, White Mage's role is going to be one where you're going to kind of want to poke um, at the boss with regular attacks. Use drives to cultivate your orbs and get ready for the break. And then once you're ready for the break, use Artemis to help boost the party's break to send the boss into the break. And do the maximum damage that you possibly can. Um, also what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to cultivate more hard orbs because of your life draw up. Um, and, and really maximize your efficiency um, and, and helping the party out as much as possible. So that's kind of what White Mage is about right now. Um, I'm going to move on to Night Night. What, what I re recommend for every job that is not a support class is to bring one attack card and one debuff card of some sort, okay? Anything that you can really, really get your hands on that will help debuff the boss. And you're going to want to use those occasionally. And depending on what the, uh, the debuff is, say, say you have like a, a magic down debuff, that would be great to use just before... Uh, an ultimate. Also Fenrir would be a great card to use just before the boss does a really big move to potentially stun him and delay him in his actions and maybe he doesn't when he gets back up from the stun he doesn't do that big charge move that he was he was going to do and it saves your, your white mage from having to heal the party. So I, I really do highly recommend that everybody brings one damage card to do damage with and then one debuff card. I've included a defensive ability here just in case the white mage has problems keeping up your defenses. Um, this is probably going to be changed to a taunt later on especially for the defender classes so that way you can help absorb some damage from the boss and, and, and really you maximize your abilities as a defender class with your your, you know, massive hit points and other things that you have at your disposal. Um, I've also included Flame Shift here. Flame Shift is going to help you do your job in driving uh, resistances for the party. Uh, so you can use your hard orbs that you gather to Flame Shift and then drive orbs and then you give your party the maximum amount of resistances that they can get over the course of five turns and that's huge um so that's that's definitely something to to keep in mind uh, i i would highly suggest using some of the shift cards as a defender class those should be pretty useful uh going on to into the future um at least for the near future this is kind of my recommended uh setup for a break class um so what do you have here? You have your one damage card, Bayako, because he's ice, and this is a firefight. Fenrir for stun, just for utility, uh, for uh, instances where you think that stun is warranted. Uh, you have Artemis to help you uh, break the boss quicker. And also kind of as like a minor recovery card to help you aid in your recovery. Um, and you have the water poo poo to, to kind of help you do the same thing to help break the boss down uh, very quickly. I think that's going to be pretty useful for 
at least the brake class to bring water poo poo because of their auto ability um, area ultimate charge normal attacks you're encouraged to use normal attacks to charge the ultimate gauges for your party as a breaker so the the water poo poo should have a nice effect for you um, just keep in mind that y you have to kind of watch how many actions you're using as a breaker and and just be able to manage your actions as best as possible um, I think since since uh, the water poo poo has a uh, quick cast on it it doesn't count as using an action so that's gonna be really a really good useful tool to bring uh, I don't really know of a, a real good thief build here uh, I'm kinda struggling with this I, I don't have a lot a lot of really good thief cards this is kind of maybe a suggested setup that you could use uh, fire poo poo to help with your survivability just to, to kind of help you survive a little bit better uh, because you don't a have access to the water poo poo and honestly you don't really want to be using the poo poo anyway he's just kind of a filler slot um, I put Moogle in here as your support card to help you deal damage and do your job effectively Moogle combined with um, combined with your passive raises damage up by 50% is going to allow you to hit extremely hard um, even with, even with off elements, um, you're probably still going to be able to hit, you know, close to 15,000 damage as a thief if you have Moogle up. Um, and then obviously you have your damage card and your debuff card as previously stated. So those are the suggestions that I have for the, for the classes that I have available at the moment, guys. I, I'll release more when I get them. Um... I hope you found this video informative. If you if you like the content, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And I will see you guys next video.